I don't think I've ever covered a more difficult story in my 20 years as a journalist. The first reaction was complete and other shock and disbelief that this would happen in 2022. And what transpired afterwards was just a whirlwind of emotion, not just for me, but for many women that I spoke to in Tehran. Ordinary women that I was meeting and talking to, they start crying and telling me that they don't know what else to do but cry out of anger. That was the first reaction most of the women I knew had to her death. I'm Dorsa Jabari, correspondent for Al Jazeera, and between us, all women in Iran feel like it could be like Mahsa. Mahsa Amini was a 22-year-old girl who was visiting the capital, Tehran, with her family. And on September 13th, she was exiting a metro station in the center of the city with her brother at the time. She was confronted by the so-called morality police for being allegedly dressed inappropriately. So she was taken to a police station for what the authorities called so-called re-education of why the hijab is mandatory in Iran. Usually these re-education classes last about one hour, but that was not the case for Mahsa. The authorities said that she had suffered a heart attack and she was taken to a hospital nearby where she was in a coma and then she had another heart attack and died. Her family are saying a very different story, that she had suffered abuse at the hands of the police when she was in their custody. The protests really started about 48 hours after she was pronounced dead. I think one of the reasons that we've seen such a reaction from women inside Iran as well as outside is because this issue of mandatory hijab has always been a hot topic. There is this tremendous amount of anger from women because we all have been through this experience of what it's like in Iran when you're leaving your home. You could be stopped at any time, anywhere in the city from someone from the morality police who might deem you to be dressed inappropriately. Basically, we all feel that any of us could be Massa. There was a connection we all had to Massa that was felt quite deeply across Iran. The morality police are in charge of enforcing the mandatory hijab, that is the rule in Iran. As soon as you arrive in the country, whether you're a local or a foreigner, Muslim or another religion, it doesn't matter. You are required to be dressed a certain way. Different parts of Tehran, at least, are more strict about the hijab. The more official places you go to, like government offices, they're more inclined to abide by the mandatory hijab. But I think this latest incident highlights the fact that no matter where you are or who you are, you're always at risk of a confrontation with the morality police. This particular case and what's happened to Massa and the issue of the mandatory hijab, the protests haven't been isolated to her hometown or the capital. We've seen over a dozen cities where people have come out to protest. And although they, the numbers are fairly small, but even those small numbers are significant because we know that they risk being arrested and detained for just coming out and protesting. That is the reason that we've seen a number of crackdowns taking place these demonstrations have illustrated that there is a desire, there is a social interest in expanding women's rights in the country. The women that we've seen burning their hijab, women that we're seeing cutting off their hair in reaction to what has taken place with Massa and the restrictions around their daily lives. There is a need for dialogue to revisit the issue of women's rights in Iran, certainly now more than ever.